It's clear that Indonesia has what it takes to become a global leader in the sustainable aquaculture sector. The nation has some crazy new fish farm proposals for sustainable aquaculture villages. These villages would have all they need, including farms, garbage collection systems, and renewable energy sources. As a bonus, this would also be good for the economy and the planet. These new fish farms in Indonesia will be developed to establish a self-sufficient aquaculture system. Even though it's very early in the project, the nation has begun planning out where these farms would go. The fish farms will employ renewable resources like recycled water and solar energy to create a sustainable ecosystem for their fish. Making these villages self-sufficient in terms of food and money is also the government's primary objective. With that said, Indonesia also has plans to construct brand new fish farms to ensure that the country's expanding population is fed in a sustainable manner. The villages will house the fish farms and each community will be responsible for its own aquaculture output. Sustainable fish production will be achieved through a number of means, one of which is the utilization of seaweed to construct an artificial reef inside the fish ponds. Along with this, the farms will also use a closed-loop system that'll recycle both water and nutrients, which is beyond impressive. Fish farming is anticipated to provide fresh revenue for the government and give job opportunities to locals. This project may have a significant influence when it comes to food security in Indonesia. How are these new fish farm villages going to change the aquaculture system in Indonesia forever? And how will they affect the economy and the environment? By the year's end, Indonesia hopes to have established a network of 136 villages devoted to aquaculture. This program is a component of the government's broader push to increase exports of seafood like shrimp, lobster, crab and seaweed, all of which have earned international recognition. The proposal has been met with approval but experts warn that it won't succeed without careful environmental planning, including safeguards to prevent the destruction of mangrove forests and efficient trash disposal. Although Indonesia is a leading supplier of farmed seafood, the country's carbon-rich mangrove forests and other vital coastal ecosystems have long been sacrificed to support the country's fish farms. In December, Indonesia's fisheries ministry said that the country had set up six of these aquaculture villages and planned to add another 130 by the end of 2022. Shrimp, lobster, crab, and seaweed are just some of the high-value aquaculture commodities which these villages will grow. The Director General of Aquaculture Fisheries for the ministry stated at a virtual event that increasing output of commodities for exporting comes first. He continued by saying that the scheme will provide employment opportunities while also improving the nation's food security. From 1990 to 2018, there was a global increase in aquaculture output, and Indonesia was a major contributor to this growth. There was a 6% year-over-year growth in the country's aquaculture production, which totaled 12 and a quarter million metric tons in the third quarter of 2021. While Indonesia leads the world in exporting frozen saltwater shrimp, it trails behind its neighbors in exporting fresh, salted, or smoked shrimp. White leg shrimp, also called Panaeus monodon, and Asian tiger shrimp, or Panaeus monodon, are two of its most popular exports. The government's efforts to grow the aquaculture industry have been met with praise, but experts warn that careful environmental planning is essential, especially in the areas of land clearance and garbage disposal for the farms. According to Abdul Halim, head of the Center for Maritime Studies for Humanity, removing carbon-rich mangrove forests to create shrimp and fish ponds is a common practice when developing aquaculture farms in Indonesia. The Center for International Forestry Research reports that during the previous three decades, Indonesia has lost over half of its mangrove land. To combat the effects of climate change, President Widodo of Indonesia committed to reforesting 600,000 hectares or 1.5 million acres of damaged coastline by 2024. Abdul argued that the government should be able to handle the waste management issues that have long plagued aquaculture plants, which are normally disposed of by pumping it into the ocean or a nearby lake. 
due to the environmental deterioration largely driven by human activities including pollution, deforestation, and damaging fishing methods, the planning ministry reported in 2019 that 15 lakes were in critical condition. Some of the lakes even have a history of mass fish deaths that have been documented on many occasions. According to Abdi Sahufan, the national coordinator of the non-governmental organization Destructive Fishing Watch Indonesia, the government needs to address fundamental challenges facing the aquaculture sector, such as creating a detailed map of the farms, establishing the land's legal status, and implementing effective water management. Avoiding mangrove degradation while also revitalizing the shrimp farming business has been a government priority for many years. Abdi, however, claimed that hardly any progress had been made in this regard. For the aquaculture industry to meet its production goals, he said, reformative change is needed. Half of the world's fish supply comes from aquaculture, which is a $160 billion business. As the population expands and the need for seafood grows, so too will this sector. Indonesia is a major player in the global seafood industry. The government has made significant investments in fish farming, and it is currently the top exporter of farmed fish in the world. The modern fish farms in Indonesia are vast and very productive. They use cutting-edge technology that allows for rapid fish production. A greater quantity of fish can be produced at a cheaper cost on the new farms, making farmed fish more competitive than wild-caught fish. If more people consume fish from fish farms, that's good for the environment. Indonesia is one of the world's leading exporters of fish and seafood. Recirculating aquaculture systems are one of the most exciting new developments in the industry. RAS may be employed in either saltwater or freshwater ecosystems to increase the stocking densities of fish. The use of RAS has been met with much success in other areas of Asia, and there is hope that it'll be implemented on a larger scale in Indonesia as well. LED illumination, which may stimulate growth and enhance yields, is another potential technology. Tuning LED lights to certain wavelengths promote growth in plants. It has also been shown to have similar effect on fish. Indonesia can gain a lot from fish aquaculture. It helps rural communities by creating employment and giving a boost to small-scale farmers' incomes. As an alternate food source, fish farming aids in the preservation of wild fish populations. Along with this, fish farming may contribute to enhanced water quality and other environmental advantages. Coastal erosion may be mitigated, and other species can find a safe haven in mangrove forests that are also utilized for fish farming. In short, fish farming has many positive effects on Indonesia and its people. With more than 17,000 islands and a total coastline of 54,716 kilometers, Indonesia is the biggest archipelago in the world. Moreover, with over 280 million people, it has the third highest population on the planet. The success of these fish farms might have far-reaching consequences for aquaculture throughout the world. As a result, they have the potential to alleviate some of the strain on the world's wild fisheries while simultaneously satisfying rising consumer demand for seafood. In order for fish farming to become a viable industry in Indonesia, a number of obstacles must first be removed. To summarize, Indonesia's radical new fish farm plans to establish insane sustainable aquaculture villages is a fantastic strategy for reducing marine fisheries depletion. These villages will be constructed close to the coast to reduce travel time and traffic as well as to lessen their influence on the natural environment. Villagers will have a reliable income for the foreseeable future, and fish stocks will be protected thanks to this strategy.